Hey guys, back again already. I was already out this morning and found what could be a footprint. So we did a video on that, Gage and I. Now I'm going to hike back in the half mile and I want to take some measurements because I know you guys are going to ask me. So let's be scientific. I'm going to go back into where I saw it, measure it. And along the way, I'm also bringing my uh, camera with the macro lens. And I saw a bunch of mushrooms and cool fall stuff. So I want to take some pictures of that along the way. But let's get back to that footprint and be scientific about it. Okay, here we are guys, back at the footprint. I'm gonna measure it, take a couple photographs, and we'll go from there. Okay, from toe all the way back here to heel. Heel would be right here, 14 inches. And the reason I say heel there is because that's not compressed. So the heel would come around here, so 14 inches. So the depth on the outside of the foot would be about two inches. And then on the inside here, it's three and a half. And this front half is from here, is the front half of the print, the back half of the print, the heel is up here. So this right here is down three inches, you know, and, and out here it's only down an inch. But back here on the heel, it's not down at all, it's just compressed. It actually took a bit more work to find that exact spot, that exact little trail. I was out here 35 minutes zigzagging until I found exactly where we were this morning. So that's what I mean by there's lots of stuff in here, evidence and new things to find because it's just so much ground to cover. You find something, it's hard to come back and find it that exact spot again. In the last video, I didn't have a measuring tape. So I just guessed at the uh, width of this and I said 30 inches. So let's take a look. We'll hook it right here on the end. 30 and 3 quarter inches. How's that for a guess? Can you trust Gary to measure stuff in the bush? I guess you can. So I'm just going to wander through here with the camera, look for mushrooms and stuff, and spend an hour, hour and a half, guys. Uh, the rest of this video will continue the next time I go out into the bush, and I'll add the, the photos from today into that video. So stay tuned. New day, and I got a bit of work I have to do today. We're gonna hit the trails, Gage and I, but I'm gonna cut some uh, trails behind the house, clear them up, really. I've never really cut a proper skidoo trail over to the 90-acre uh, trail from my property. I just kind of zigzag through the trees, and uh, it's getting pretty tight, so I'm gonna work on that for a little bit. I got this huge tree right here, this big ash that's gotta come down. I'm not doing that today, I don't feel like it. I'd have to move the truck, and that's too much work. I always leave my saw ready to go. I sharpen it, re-oil it, fill it with gas every time I use it so I know I can just grab it and go. Oh, 
Well, there's the Skidoo Trail right there, guys, and you can see it is right full of water. Like a gazelle. Well, I didn't want to have to cut that one, but it just makes more sense. The trail is wide open pretty much from there. It's a lot less cutting for me, so I ended up taking that one in the end. A couple more down here. And then we're right on the 90 acre trail. Right here. So, hey, hey! Just a piece of advice for Tom, eh? If you finish the job you start, you won't lose your chainsaw. If you guys missed it in the Painting with Canada video, I heard Tom coming through the swamp here and I yelled down, what was he doing? He said he was retracing his steps because he lost his chainsaw. Yep, true story. <laughs> A little bit of chainsawing is good. Actually, I've known moose to come back into the, to the whine of a chainsaw, so maybe we can get that bull to stick around. I doubt it. I think he's long gone, but that's it for me for today for work. I think I'm going to take Gage for a nice hike somewhere. This is the cleanest Gary you guys are going to see because I've already showered twice today. I got up, I decided I wasn't going to do much work today. Sunday, I'm going to rest. Had a shower and then came out and worked for three and a half hours cutting trails. I had to go home and shower again and then I thought, okay, I'm done for the day and Gage was winding at the door so we're out for another walk. Yeah, it sure looks like Squatch has been through here, I'm telling you. Everything's all bent down. Loopers. I think I just talked over a yell or something. I swear as I was talking I heard something there. kind of windy, I don't know. Could have just been a crow or something, I don't know. Came from that way, whatever it was. Oh, it's so wet in here. I just heard something again.
What is that? Gage. I'm trying to move to a dry spot so I don't hear the dog running through water. It's so windy, I can't tell what I'm hearing. But there's something there. We were out cutting with the chainsaw a couple hours ago, so we were making a lot of noise here in the swamp. So it's not like we're sneaking up on anything. I mean, that was a couple hours ago, but... It was back here, whatever I heard. It's pretty windy up there. Gage just took off after something, I don't know. Took off, full speed. I didn't see anything. Here he comes. What do you see? Kind of going the opposite uh, way today. The last few episodes we've been going down to the wet swamp, which is southeastern edge of the property. Today we're heading to the west towards the 90 acre trail, but I'm not really on the 90 acre trail. I'm in behind it, so just always like to see, you know, look at some new, new territory, see if anything's uh, changing or what's going on. So a reminder, all of this is private property. So me, Tom, Dave own all on this side. You know, I keep getting people saying, well, there could be people out there hunting and whatever. Nope, they shouldn't be here hunting. And if we catch them, they get the boot. Uh, only once have we got guys in here snowshoeing that Dave caught. And then last year they put in another trail down there. Nobody caught them when they put the trail in and we hiked the trail a few times. Um, I really don't care if they're if they cut across the back they're just snowshoeing but we try to keep uh, guys that are gonna hunt and you know in here walking their dogs and stuff uh, we don't want them making a habit of it just because you know they're private trails oh that hurt that hurt a lot oh, surprise that doesn't happen more often hmm Oh, 
I stepped on that and my boot just slid right down it and down I went. <sighs> oh, I think I'm gonna end this video. I landed right on my wrist. I may have broke my wrist. I'll catch you guys in the next adventure. Gotta head back to the house. Ah, son of a... Hear that? Friggin' knocking. A knock. Just heard another knock. Yeah, it sucks guys. I wanted to go for a good walk and I've heard stuff yelling today and I heard knocks, but uh, if you've ever wiped out on a dirt bike or fallen down the stairs, those are the only two other times in my life where I actually uh, broke something. I gotta say, this hurts kind of like that. <laughs> oh, my own stupid fault. Watching the camera and not watching where I'm going, and I'm very bad for that. Good thing I live with a doctor. I guess she can take a look at it for me. Just relax. It is relaxed. I think it's swollen. Right there. And a little lower. Is this? No, where your other thumb is. But this is a big... Well, I don't know, it other? hurts everywhere. Can I see? Diagnosis. Swollen and strained. I'll keep you posted. You know it hurts when I can't even play a video game. Guess it's a good thing I got all my wood cut this morning. I'm gonna see you guys in a few days because I think it's gonna take a little while to heal. I gotta edit a video with one hand. Come on.